at Dokit, uh, why, how and why we turn the MediaWiki into a packaged product to create a visual manual. Um, so I will start with the why. So here is the issue we, we, we find out. Uh, as a manufacturer, uh, when it comes to writing your uh, product documentation, uh, you are uh, going to face uh, many pain points, uh, such as uh, the fact that you need to create uh, visuals. And uh, most often, uh, when you create your documentation, uh, it could be very costly to create uh, a great visuals that are easy to maintain. The documentation is uh, sometimes uh, pretty hard to understand when you are uh, a non-technical person. Uh, the translation is also very, uh, pain, uh, pay very painful. And uh, actually creating your, uh, your documentation uh, and your manual are very uh, expensive. So at the kit, we believe we can change this. Uh, so I will, uh, during this presentation, show you how we, we, we do this. And, uh, uh, to do so, I will uh, take a docky typical use case. Uh, so, uh, when a uh, manufacturer called us, so I, let's take a manufacturer of electric blinds, of smart blinds, uh, with uh, lots of subsidiary all over the world, and with hundreds of products and user guides to create. So, uh, and at the kit, we try to answer this question as a manufacturer, how to easily create and maintain a great user documentation. So our approach uh, is to use uh, uh, forms and templates and templates to be able to create a, a uniform uh, type of document. Uh, of course, we need to provide uh, tools to annotate the images uh, because when you deal with uh, uh, some visual, you need to uh, explain to your user what to do uh, at each step of the uh, instruction. You need to translate the content. We provide tools to uh, review the content, to collect uh, end user feedback and to export and, uh, your complete manual into a PDF format. And then uh, you need to spread the information to the right people at the right moment. So let's take the first uh, point, use of forms and templates. So we use page form for that. So we have created a, a, a typical uh, form to create step-by-step -step instructions. So first, you will define uh, the metadata, the, the, the semantic properties of your um, of your instruction. Uh, so those are typically uh, the difficulty, the duration, and the category. But also, uh, we have um, created a, a, an interface to let the admin create his own uh, semantic properties so that he can add custom properties into every uh, tutorial he creates. Then you will define, uh, you will write an introduction. You can add your items, uh, uh, which are, for example, uh, the parts and the tools uh, required to, uh, to perform the, the instruction. You can add some prerequisite uh, guides, and you can add, add uh, some files. And then comes uh, the part with the steps. Oh, so sorry, I don't. I don't have the animation I had on my computer, so anyway. Uh, and you can add as much step as you want, and uh, to us, one step is uh, six images, six media. It could be images, it could be uh, annotated video, or it could be a 3D file. And then on the right part, you will define the instruction, which are a title, and then all the um, instructions that needs to be done. Uh, the second point is to annotate images. So we have created um, uh, on page form directly uh, a media gallery that allows you to uh, browse all of the media of your wiki uh, at the same as you have on, uh, on uh, VE. Um, and uh, using uh, some semantic query, you will be able to look at among all of, your, uh, all of the pictures that are stored uh, on the wiki, but also you can filter only on new um, images. And when you select one images, you can then crop it. You can add some annotations such as circle, uh, arrows, text, and little dots, wherever you want to uh, explain this. And then uh, you need to translate the content. So we, have, we are also using uh, Translate, thank you Nicholas for that, uh, extension. And um, so you're probably familiar with this extension. Uh, but we wanted to um, uh, simplify the process for the user. Because to our user, it's a bit complicated to insert, for example, the Translate tag uh, before and after every paragraph that you want to translate. So we've created some, uh, we've done some uh, improvements uh, regarding that. 
So the first thing we've done is like when you create a new page using the, the page form uh, uh, field, we add a little uh, drop down with the language that you want of the page that you want to create. So is if you want to create a page in Spanish and your interface is in English, you can do it uh, thanks to this uh, parsing function that you have created. Uh, we also have done um, a mapping using translate. Uh, each time you want to insert uh, 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 a page form field, like a drop down, you have to uh, select a property among the uh, properties that exist. Uh, for this, uh, this, this property, among the values that exist for this property, but we needed to translate the value. For example, if you have a drop down difficulty, you have three, uh, um, three values, which are uh, easy, uh, medium, and hard, and this needed to be translated into Spanish, or German, or French. So we use uh, this mapping using translate uh, parameter for that. And the last thing we've done is using also page form. When you create a field, you can add the translatable um, parameters that will automatically uh, add the, um, the tags translate on before and after the uh, text area, uh, for example. So we're creating uh, two extensions for that, the translate tags in VE and the auto set page line, which are also already published on our uh, GitHub. Um, the, f the fourth point we need and the fourth service we provide to our clients is to uh, review the content. So um, we use a flag ref for that, but we have also there done some little improvement like more, to make it more user friendly. So instead of going to the edit page and uh, start changing the status, you can directly, if you have the right permission to do so, access to the um, drop down tools and select submit to review and it will automatically uh, pop up a dialogue where you can write the comment and then you can uh, submit to review. And then the uh, document is now under review. Um, and then uh, as a, a reviewer you now have the valided version and you can uh, validate uh, a version and also provide a little comment or you can reject it. So. We, uh, you, you, as you may know, uh, flag drive is a very powerful extension, but it's a bit complex to uh, uh, to set up. So we we took the um, the part to uh, uh, define the process uh, workflow for our customers by uh, creating these three uh, these three uh, st stages. Uh, then collect user feedback. So uh, we are using um, the common stream extension, and um, which, which is a, a very good extension to uh, create comments and to uh, then query all of your comments you need. But we wanted to uh, gather all of the discussion into one, one pages. So we are creating this uh, all discussion page, who uh, allows the user to filter discussion uh, by um, by status, for example, unanswered, newest, most answered, most helpful, solved, and unsolved. So that's some improvements that we need to uh, also release, but it's currently uh, being tested by uh, some of our clients. And you can also filter the discussion by category. So it's make it very easy for um, uh, someone who wants to contribute into a wiki to just go to this whole discussion page and see what is the newest discussion and where he can uh, give help. Uh, then, uh, so with, with what I show you, we, we have uh, all of the um, uh, guides that you have created, so individual guide, but at some point you need to create a complete manual to gather all of your guide. For example, if you have a product, um, let's say this one, you want to uh, teach your user how to uh, um, build this thing, so you probably have maybe five or ten guides uh, for each part of the, of the furniture. So if you need, to, uh, you need to create a complete manual that will gather all of this uh, guide. So what we've done is we have creating this, this page. It's, uh, it's just um, a page on uh, the manual uh, namespace. And when uh, the system finds out that it's a manual uh, name, namespace page, it will change the edit links to this uh, special edit page who allows you to just add a new page uh, into your manual. So you have like a search field when you can search among all of your uh, um, wiki for a page. You just select a page and add it to your uh, manual. And then you can also select the order you want to uh, have among the, among the page of your manual. You can also add title 
and the subtitles uh, if you want to uh, split your content in, uh, uh, in, in multiple sections. Uh, and when it's done, uh, your uh, manual is, com uh, is, is, uh, is organized. You can export it in, in PDF format. Uh, so this extension is uh, being tested also. We plan to release it open source uh, this year. Uh, we call it book page. Um, and uh, yeah, we still have some work to do, but it's already uh, testable on uh, the, our demo. So, and the last uh, things I was talking about at the beginning of this presentation is uh, spreading uh, the right information to the right person. So, this is still a, a work in progress, but we are uh, currently uh, developing a, a progressive web app, uh, which is not into MediaWiki, but we use the MediaWiki and the semantic MediaWiki APIs to collect uh, all of the right uh, information. So, because we realize that um, it's, uh, I mean, a bit complicated, as we said earlier, uh, to uh, define uh, the read uh, uh, access and read restrictions. Um, uh, we know that there are the lockdown extension, but still, you know, there are, if you want to, uh, for example, restrict per page uh, access, it's very complicated. So uh, we find out that it could be easier, uh, especially since our customer uh, mostly uh, use, uh, you know, the instruction on the field, and they don't, they are not when you are building this furniture, for example, you are not in front of your computer, you usually use your phone. So we decided to create this uh, standalone application that uses the um, semantic uh, MediaWiki and MediaWiki APIs to, uh, to, uh, to, to query the, the right uh, document. Uh, so this, ex uh, this uh, application is still under development, but uh, we also um, uh, probably uh, re-release it open source uh, maybe this year or next year. <laughs> um, so that's how we, we, we do it at, at Dockit. And uh, right now we are uh, in, a, in a process of uh, deploying multiple instances uh, for all of our customers. So we are, uh, um, we, we are trying to uh, deploy and manage multiple platforms for hundreds of companies of this kind. So we are uh, creating a Dockit farm uh, to uh, being able to uh, launch multiple uh, instances. Um, so how it works, um, basically uh, one of our customers goes to our website and uh, is just filling the subs subscription form, sorry. And then uh, we are creating a, a, a Laravel app uh, who allows us to manage all of our clients and websites. Uh, so for each client, we will, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, define a new URL. Uh, we will define uh, all the extension he wants to use. And automatically, it will execute Ansible script that will uh, be able to configure uh, uh, one instance per client. So we currently have a farm with about uh, 10 clients uh, testing, uh, testing this infrastructure. Well, I'm seeing I'm almost done. <laughs> so I uh, wanted to tell you what's our main challenge for this year. Uh, we need to uh, really consider uh, a, a great approach to, uh, to access the read and per page access control. As we said earlier, so I would like very much uh, uh, take part of the discussion regarding these topics uh, during this, uh, these two days, three days. And also, uh, we were not very good uh, since the past two years about releasing open source. Uh, I mean, most of the things we don't are already released open source, but the documentation is very poor right now. And also, we haven't uh, had too much time uh, to, uh, uh, right, to, to write all of the documentation on MediaWiki.org. So that's something we really want to do this year. Um, so yeah, we, we haven't also, because our company is very young, we, we are three years old, and uh, we were uh, very focused uh, shipping uh, the first MVP uh, uh, of our product. So uh, right now we want to, to make a uh, very clean documentation. So thank you very much. Uh, do, you, do you have any question or? <laughs> I really like that image annotator. Um, can you tell us what, what, how, how you did that? Is that part of Visual Editor, or is that some custom extension? Or? Uh, maybe I can show you a demo. Uh, 
with this computer, if I may. May I? Yeah, okay, thanks. So it's a... Um, So that's the URL of our demo, and it's uh, it's open, so you can you can just go if you want. That's not my keyboard. I, uh, there is an accent on my name, and I don't know how to put it. <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, how can I do that? Maybe I can still access to the editor uh, while I'm not logged in, even though I think my modification won't be saved. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, basically, this is how it works. So, you can just select uh, any uh, annotation. Uh, you can also add uh, colors and, sh uh, yeah. Um, so, that's a standalone extension. Um, Develop, uh, we are using a framework called uh, Fabric.js, uh, who uh, has all of the tools to, to do such kind of things. And um, the other thing, I'm not sure I'm able to do it. Yeah, so that's an example of uh, already a filled in uh, um, tutorial. So, yeah, I can reorganize my pictures. Uh, among the others, and then, oh no, this is not available. But yeah, you can also uh, re well, you know flash form, right? And uh, also on the right here, we have modified VE to have our own templates. So if you want to prevent a danger, you can also use some uh, templates directly into the VE area. So, so Fabric JS. Is there, an, is there an extension for Fabric.js? Yeah, it's um, already included into the extension, so you need to go to um, if you go on our GitHub and you look for image annotator, yeah, it's here. So here is the extension. Thank you. If anyone has extensions that they're releasing, please give me the URL so I can add them to non big media repository. I'll repeat that in case it didn't get. So Mark was saying if they're releasing extensions to let him know. Um, I also wanted to just um, say um, if you're releasing your extensions right now on GitHub, I want to make a plea for releasing them on Garrett, which is the Wikimedia um, repo for um, extensions, and there are a number of benefits to hosting them there, not the least of which is the fact that as changes are made to MediaWiki Core, there are often searches across extensions to see if, if things being deprecated, for example, affect existing extensions. And if you do create extensions and host them on Garrett, there's more likelihood of folks who are core MediaWiki developers being aware of them and recognizing if changes to core are going to affect your extensions. So there is a benefit to hosting on the Garrett repo if you're developing extensions. 
Yeah, I saw some very interesting um, like landing pages, like the page that lists a bunch of manuals or the page that was listing a bunch of comment streams um, threads. I'm just wondering um, how those pages are created. Is that through Semantic Media Wiki or is there an extension that you wrote? Uh, mostly we're using Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, on the, yeah, actually, we also want to give to our customer uh, a little bit of uh, um, uh, uh, how to say it in English. So they, they, we want them to we want to allow them to customize their own, own page, uh, so they can uh, choose whether they want to display either pages or either manuals or either category uh, on the phone page. Um, so yeah. So it's empty here, but right now, yeah, we, there is uh, uh, on this one uh, you can, you have the title, the, the search, and then here it was supposed to have the list of manual but, uh, tutorials, but but as uh, I can't log in, <laughs> sorry, uh, maybe. Yeah, I'll figure out. Okay, so that's the regular home page. So, yeah, uh, all of these, those uh, kind of widgets are customizable using uh, what we call the wiki administration tool. That's uh, also an extension that we have developed. So, I can, have, uh, I can show it to you also. So, in, on this area, on these pages, uh, you, it's a kind of a dashboard, so I'll see uh, some of uh, the number of register user and page kind of statistics. Uh, and then I can define some general parameters like I can change the color of my buttons, for example, if I, if I want to, and the, also the over uh, status. So it will look like this. Yeah, I like it. So I can update. And then I, can, I need to refresh still. Oh, control shift there. And then, yeah, I can change the color of, of my links. I can also change my logo and my banner and my favicon. So those are uh, tools uh, that are very uh, useful for our clients. Uh, so they can very, they are really autonomous. Also, they can change the color of the annotation. Uh, so what I showed before, uh, they can manage the category. So we are creating a, uh, a place where I can create a new category directly here. So let's say EMWCon can provide a little description and can upload a picture. And then here is my category and I can check it out. And right now it's empty. But so that's our category page. So each category page comes with the subcategory and then the list of manual and then the list of page if there are. Uh, and then I can also, uh, I, we have created this um, metadata manager. It's a place where the, it's a page where the user, the admin, can create the metadata he wants to add into the, um, the form. So that's a bit, I don't know if you see the contrast. Yeah. So let's say I would like to add another metadata. So I need to define the name of it in English. So let's say, uh, for example, uh, city. Uh, it's, uh, let's say, I want it to be a drop down, and I can define my values. So, uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. And I will put another one, like uh, Paris. And I make it mandatory, or I, if I wanted to use it in the filter of the Explorer, the Explorer is a page where you can. Yeah, brute all of your content. And then I will define if I want this um, metadata to be into the tutorial or the page, uh, type of page. So then when I will save it, so all of this, oh yeah, I also need to define a font awesome icon. And 
when I will save it. Uh, so it's stored into the page itself. So this is why we use the docket namespace so no one can, can edit it, it. And then uh, when I create a new tutorial, it will automatically add the drop down of the city into my uh, form. So there are script, script in the back that edit the form, that edit everything, that create the properties, that e edit the templates, and that edit the, the form. And here I have a city. And among the other uh, administration, uh, yeah, we also have done this, which is very uh, useful. It's like, uh, It's it's a uh, it's a place a page where I can see the list of all of my users and I can ch uh, choose uh, what role uh, I want to give them and here we have uh, created a, a, a page where you can define the permission of each role so by default we have created four roles so public so anyone which is not registered, the so registered user, the contributors, the proofreaders, and the administrators. And for each of them, I can define whether I want them to read the content, create an account. So basically, behind this, we use this MediaWiki regular permission uh, stuff that you usually put into your uh, local settings. But we are creating this interface so it's more uh, user friendly. And uh, the home page, as you said, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. If you have more questions, I would uh, love to discuss uh, with you about it. Uh, do you have? Yeah. Give me any any other question? While Avita gets set up. Brian. Thank you. Well, man, I got one question for you, actually.